Hello, I am Ricky J, and welcome to another reaction with me, Ricky. We're going to continue the uh, second part with me doing the reaction to the American Civil War oversimplified. You find all the information you need regarding what video on what channel I am actually doing this from. The link will be in the uh, description. Uh, and uh, so far, we have learned so much about the first part, and I am super eager to actually continue this journey uh, for part two. Don't forget to leave it a like and uh, subscribe for more. Thank you so much to my Patreons. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The support you give is fantastic, and I adore you for it. Shout out to Sean Pearson, Buddha Squirrel, and David Bangson for being supreme tier donators. You get one of these after two months, all the way from Sweden. Fantastic! Let's continue with part two. Oh my lord. Seated, the Confederate states began seizing federal U.S. property throughout the South. Off the coast of Charleston, South Carolina, was one such federal property, Fort Sumter, held by a measly, undersupplied U.S. force. The Confederate militia there demanded the fort surrender, a request which was quickly denied, and any remaining hope for a peaceful solution to the secession crisis probably then died when the Confederates did this. The Battle of Fort Sumter is considered to be the beginning of the American Civil War. Many of the Confederates there also considered it to be the end of the American Civil War. They hoped Old Abe would just sigh and say, okay, you win. Unfortunately for them, Lincoln actually said, you're about to get a roundhouse to the face. Lincoln sent out the call for 75,000 volunteers, and men signed up in droves, hopeful for some adventure and good old-fashioned F-U-N. In the new Confederate capital at Richmond, Virginia, Confederate President Jefferson Davis and his cheekbones had also sent out the call for 100,000 men. As ever, both sides hoped for a quick end to the war. Is it over yet? No, Jimmy, it's been one week. Is it over now? No. How about now? If you ask that one more time, I swear I will turn this army around and you'll all have to go back home to your wives and children. But in particular, the South knew the conflict would pose a bit of a challenge. How can we expect to win with a population of only 5 million against 22 million in the North? If you count us 4 million slaves, you'd have 9 million. Great idea. Hand these rifles out to all the men. Wait a minute. Yeah. You almost had me there. Yeah. The problem yeah. for Lincoln was that many of his top generals were getting old and were being a bit too cautious. The commanding general was a man named Winfield Scott, a veteran of the Mexican-American War. And by now, he was too fat to even mount a horse. Okay, chaps, we need to come up with a plan. Hit me. We could wait for the Confederates to come and apologize. Maybe we should all sit in a circle and discuss our feelings. Crossing the Delaware into New Jersey worked for me. Those are all terrible ideas. <laughs> and you, wrong video. Hey, I'm the greatest president in the history of this nation. Yeah, we'll see about that, dingus. Eventually, Lincoln's generals came up with a multi-pronged strategy. First, a blockade would cut off and starve the south of supplies by sea. Secondly, taking control of the Great Mississippi River would sever the south's economic artery while splitting it in two. And finally, a main Union force in the east would move south and take the Confederate capital, ending the war. Bada boom, bada bing. Skirmishes began to break out across the nation, and the Union army in the east began to move south towards Richmond. Everything seemed to be going well until they reached Manassas, where they came upon a large Confederate force. It's almost like they were waiting for us. How did they know? As it turned out, spies in D.C. had sent a coded oh. message to the Confederates warning of the invasion. Did you use NordVPN? What the heck is NordVPN? No, no. I'm so glad you asked. Do you use the internet? <gasps> Me too. Do you like internet safety? <gasps> Me too! Hey, we should hang out sometime so I can tell you about NordVPN. NordVPN has over 5,000 secure and super fast servers in 60 countries that allow you to surf the net safely without personal data logging. Not only does it help you stay secure, but with just the click of a button, you can take a quick trip to Sweden and enjoy some Nordic crime dramas. Is there some amazing content on YouTube that's still blocked in your country? Not to fear, NordVPN is here. NordVPN gives you access to all of these amazing features, and it has a 30-day money-back guarantee. So click the link in the description below, nordvpn.com slash oversimplified, and use promo code oversimplified to get 70% off an annual subscription. That's only $3.49 a month, plus an additional month for free. Again, that's nordvpn.com slash oversimplified. And as always, you'll be supporting my channel. So thank you.
now where were we? Oh yeah, Secession, Fat <gasps> Man, and the Union invasion into Virginia. Okay. The two sides encountered each other at Manassas and both geared up for the first major battle of the Civil War, the first battle of Bull Run. The Confederates rapidly brought in support by a rail and the two sides were about equal in numbers. However, they were also equally inexperienced. A large number of civilians also rode out by carriage from DC to picnic on the nearby hills and watch the excitement unfold. Nobody seemed to quite understand how dis- uh, Michael Bay eats your heart out. This is incredible that they're sitting here having a picnic with their kids while people are dying down the hill. Incredible. Destructive this war was going to be. The Union forces pulled a flanking maneuver to hit the Confederates on their left, and the two sides fired on each other in rows. Farm families living in the area were forced to flee the fighting, including a man named Wilmer McLean. Hurry up, Martha! There's a war out here! The more you tell me to hurry up, the slower I will go! The Union force saw initial success pushing the Confederates back to Henry Hill. But one as of yet fairly unknown General Thomas Jackson had arrived, and he took a defensive position, standing firm like a stone wall, holding the Union Army off, and finally sending them running back to Washington, D.C. Oh, man! With heavy casualties, the sobering... All right, let's check out the casualties here. The first battle of Bull Run casualties. Uh, the north side got killed. 480 people, 1,000 wounded, and 1,200 missing. And the other side has 390 killed, 1,600 wounded, and 12 missing. 12. The reality of war hit both sides hard. Incredible. And the North, having just lost the first major battle, had to face the serious prospect that they may not actually win this war. President Lincoln, General Jackson whipped us so hard, the Confederates are calling him Stonewall Jackson. Wait, that's why they're calling him that? Not because he looks like he ran face first into a stone wall? Apparently not. Worse yet, the North had also lost... Now I, now, now I actually know why he, they called him Stone Stonewall. That's, that's cool. I heard about the name before, but I, I didn't know why. It's the first major battle out west, giving away control of southwest Missouri. All of this was terrible news for Abraham Lincoln, especially since many of his generals and cabinet already didn't have much respect for him. They felt he was incapable of running a war because he seemed a bit like your friendly old grandpa. He famously loved a long-winded story and a good pun. I've been so busy, my wife is missing me. But her aim is starting to improve. <laughs> but deep down, few realized he could also be incredibly shrewd. <laughs> oh, Abe, you're so funny. Funny how? Funny like I'm a clown? Uh, Abe, I was just... No, no, funny how? Like I'm here to amuse you? During the war, Lincoln... Goodfellas, right? That's from the movie Goodfellas with Joe Pesci committed acts that were viewed by some as impeachable. His administration suppressed the free media from printing articles sympathetic towards the South. Some Southern sympathizers were even arrested without a trial. Lincoln's criticizers began accusing him of being a tyrant. But to so, quote the man himself... So it basically means that Lincoln is uh, starting to freak out a bit now. Hey, it's war, baby. What are you going to do? By the end of 1861, with sure things already that. looking bad for the North, Abolitionists such as Frederick Douglass couldn't believe that the Union Army weren't enlisting black men. He continued to put pressure on Lincoln to make the war about emancipation. Mr. President, it's time to make the war about emancipation. Hmm, I don't want to ruffle any feathers. The feathers are already ruffled. But Lincoln, hanging on to hope for a quick end to the conflict, continued to fight only for the preservation of the Union. It was decided, however, that escaped slaves from the Confederacy could be held as enemy contraband, and many of these men were put to work bolstering the Union's infrastructure and supply lines. Hoping to get things moving, Lincoln made young General George McClellan the new commanding general, and McClellan began to train up his men. He thought a lot of himself, however, and believed he was going to be the nation's great savior. And like many others, he didn't approve of the president's handling of the war. On one occasion, Lincoln went to McClellan's house to meet with him, but McClellan was late returning home. He kept the president waiting, and when he finally got there, he just straight up went to bed. Now that's what I call disrespectful. McClellan talked the talk, but could he walk the walk? All right, this is this is incredible. Uh, there is a movie where uh, the African Americans form uh, a, a division, a company. I don't know the size of it. I can't remember who was playing the main character of the white general oh, i can't remember i wonder if that's him i can't remember the name of the general 
No. Like Lincoln's other generals, McClellan was maddeningly cautious. Hey man, could you move south and attack the enemy? What? Are you crazy? What if they have a big scary army down there? They probably do. What? Oh my gosh! McClellan worried that he did not have the numbers he needed to fight effectively. What if they have like 10,000 men? Okay, no problem. We'll get you 20,000 men. Well, what if they have 30,000 men? I'll need 40. Okay, you can have 40. Well, what if they have 50? I'll need 60. Lincoln tried, but it was all in vain. McClellan would not make a move for the rest of the year. The North's one saving grace for now was a general out west fighting in Kentucky and Tennessee, General Ulysses S. Grant. Cool, collected, methodical, and a big fan of whiskey. His chief of staff took it upon himself to keep Grant sober. One officer said that Grant habitually wore an expression as though he were determined to drive his head through a brick wall and was about to do it. And that determination led him to score a number of key victories when others around him were failing. At the Battle of Fort Donaldson, Grant was like, why does Stonewall Jackson get a cool nickname and I don't? I want a cool nickname. Sir, the Confederates say they're ready to surrender and want to know your terms. No terms, just unconditional surrender. Hey, unconditional surrender Grant. That's a pretty cool nickname, right? Guys, right? <laughs> Later in April 1862, the Confederates launched a sudden attack on Grant's army at Shiloh, but the determined, unconditional surrender Grant threw his lines at the rebels and sent them running. The battle resulted in the heaviest casualties. Uh, in okay, we got another, another battle here, Shiloh. Uh... That's a lot of people getting killed in this one. North side, uh, only almost 3,000 people got killed in that one. And uh, oh, holy crap, that's a lot of wounded too. Captured. Look at this outside here. We got 1.5K killed. That's incredible. U.S. history so far. And despite his victory, Grant found himself under fire. You have to get rid of Grant. Why? Didn't he win? Yes, but he just threw his men at the enemy. Isn't that the point? Also, he's a loony drunk. Well, what does he like to drink? I believe whiskey, sir. Then send him more. Lincoln watched as his cabinet did nothing but bicker, and his generals did nothing. But then, worst of all, personal tragedy struck. Lincoln's young son, Willie, very much loved by the president, died of typhoid oh. fever at the age of 11. Lincoln was a sensitive man and was heavily affected by the loss. His wife was inconsolable. But one of Lincoln's greatest traits, what made him such a great leader, was in the darkest of times, with composure and determination, he kept moving forward. He knew it was his responsibility to hold himself and his family together. And by doing so, he hoped to hold the nation together. And he had had it with McClellan's in action. Lincoln decided he was going to take control. In March 1862, Lincoln firmly ordered McClellan to once again move south towards Richmond. McClellan insisted instead they move by sea to the Virginia Peninsula and attack Richmond from the southeast. Yes, said Lincoln. Okay, anything. Lincoln held on to some of McClellan's men to defend D.C. from a nearby Stonewall Jackson wreaking havoc in the Shenandoah Valley, and he sent McClellan south. McClellan landed on the peninsula, and he began to move inland. He came up against a small Confederate army that had dug in at Yorktown. McClellan vastly outnumbered the force, oh. but it's said that Confederate General Magruder deceived McClellan by cleverly maneuvering his smaller force and making McClellan believe he faced a huge army. No, you have way more men than this. <laughs> Move forward. No. McClellan settled in for a month-long siege, giving time for Johnston to move south from Manassas and Magruder time to retreat. When he finally entered the city and found it deserted, he declared it a victory, calling his success brilliant. Then, after meeting some resistance at Williamsburg, McClellan moved to within just 20 miles of Richmond. His army's able to hear the church bells ringing in the enemy capital. You still outnumber them. Go give them hell. No. McClellan once again held back, moving slowly and defensively. And with oh, his army... All right, that's, that, that, that is not the guy I was thinking about with the African-American division. Just a heads up on that one. I think I said that before in part one. I was wrong. And two, the Confederates saw an opportunity to strike back. McClellan's advance was halted, and now the Confederates pulled an ace out of their sleeve. General Lee, you're up. Do you think we should evacuate Richmond? No, Mr. President, no need. General Robert E. Lee, one of the most brilliant military commanders of the time, was now in charge. One of his biggest strengths was his ability to read the mind of his enemy, and he knew McClellan was cautious and weak. After moving Stonewall Jackson south to join him, and even though he had a smaller army, Lee hit McClellan in a series of fast-paced, close combat battles that had McClellan spooked. McClellan retreated the Union army back again and again 
and again. Escaping the peninsula and returning to DC, Lee had defeated McClellan and the campaign had oh. failed. Well, that was a major success. A success? Oh. Tell me exactly what was successful about that. Well, we successfully retreated. You lost. I didn't lose. I merely failed to win. Things just kept looking worse for the North. At least their navy had seen some success, capturing a number of key port cities, notably when they steamrolled past Confederate forts to take New Orleans. And speaking of the navy, both sides had begun using ironclads. So that's pretty cool. But in the East, they still weren't having any luck. After McClellan's disastrous campaign, Lincoln briefly sent out one General John Pope to attack Northern Virginia. Hey man, just checking in. How's it going? Well, the Confederates kicked my butt at Cedar Mountain. Then they raided my camp and ran off with my money and clothes. Also, I appear to have been wedgied. Lee defeated Pope at yet another battle at Bull Run, in which nearby farm families once again got caught off in the fighting. Hurry up, Martha! There's another war out here! I'm waiting for my hair to dry! Wilmer McLean, sick of war, moved his family south, where he knew the war would definitely, absolutely, never touch him again. But Lincoln had yet another problem to contend with. European powers, in particular the UK, were looking increasingly like they may intervene diplomatically on the side of the Confederates. They were missing their precious supply of southern cotton because of the Union blockade, and they wanted to oh. see a swift conclusion to the war. The tension between America and Great Britain had been increasing, especially after Confederate diplomats were discovered on a British ship. Now, after McClellan's failure to take Richmond, the UK declared it impossible for the North to win. All right, so now that the now the European is coming into the uh to the situation due to the fact that there's a blockade and uh cotton amongst everything else is not over actually going overseas and this is very interesting i i really don't un, uh, i did not know that before that the Europeans were like involved with it I don't know when u k went into United States and made it made it their colony. I have no clue when, and I don't know why. Lincoln needed something to prevent Europe from getting involved, and after more petitioning from abolitionists, he decided maybe the time was finally right to make the war about ending the institution he hated, slavery. If the North had a noble cause to fight for, Europe would be less likely to intervene. But Lincoln and his cabinet knew before they could declare something as radical as emancipation, they needed a victory, especially now that the Confederates were about to go on the attack. Aware that he had a limited number of men and supplies, Lee now hoped that if he could just threaten Washington, D.C. militarily, he would gain Europe's recognition and crush Northern morale in time for the midterm elections, forcing the North to negotiate. With confidence at an all-time high, for the first time, Robert E. Lee invaded the North. Oh. But on September 13th, the North finally had some luck. Oh boy, it's my lucky day! A cigar in a field! Hey, what's this wrapped around it? Oh my gosh! That's right, the North had discovered General Lee's battle plans what? wrapped around some cigars. And in them, they saw that Lee had split up his forces. McClellan headed out from D.C., and the two sides met in the Battle of Antietam, a crucial battle that would decide the course of the war. It saw the most vicious fighting to date, and still remains the single bloodiest day in American history. But for once, Whoa. the North came out victorious, and Lee was forced to retreat. He's on the run. Chase him down and finish him off. No. You know what, old buddy, old pal? You're fired. The North had won their crucial victory. Lincoln breathed a huge sigh of relief, and with that win, he was prepared to take a huge step. On September 22nd, the Emancipation Proclamation was issued. In January, all slaves held in the Confederate States would be, as far as the U.S. government was concerned, officially free. Throughout the North, free black men and women rejoiced, knowing that if the North were to win, their brothers and sisters would no longer be held in bondage. The proclamation also had the intended effect on Europe, who were not willing to oppose a pledge to end slavery. An outraged Confederacy knew that Lincoln had given the war a new meaning. Yeah. It was no longer just about the preservation of the Union. Now, it was about creating a new Union, washed clean of its original sin. A Union without slavery. Okay, that's uh, that's the uh, my second second part of this and the first part for oversimplified. Go check out him and his channel. The link will be in the description. And I'm learning so much. I find this extremely interesting, and I love to be able to have that knowledge. It's very important that we learn 
our history, not just limited to your country. Globe history is my, in my mind, extremely, extremely important. I uh, hope you guys did enjoy this because I certainly do. And if you did, leave it a like and uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe. It's free and that's an awesome way to help me and my channel. Uh, part three and a part four is a definite. If you have any comments, anything you want to say about this, leave that in the comment section. And I will see you next time. Thank you so much to my Patreons. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Shout out to Sean Pearson, Buddha Squirrel, and David Bankson for being a supreme tier donators. After two months, you get one of this, a postcard all the way from Sweden, all the way from Sweden. Well, if you live in Sweden, it's not that far, but doesn't really matter. Thank you for watching. See you soon. Stay safe.